Welcome, adventurers! It is me, Dink and Sink, with AJ Slabs. We are here to give you Two Bros and a Mouse Episode 2. Hello, I am hello, so sir. excited. Hello, good sir. How are you? I am doing great. I feel like we have a lot of Disney stuff to talk about tonight. <laughs> I, I I think we do. I, I think we do have a, a lot of uh, Disney stuff to, to talk about. Um, hopefully, hopefully volume's good. I know we had some volume issues last time, but hopefully we've got that fixed. So we are here live, uh, with you. We are, um, gonna be doing some Disney talk. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started talking about some awesome new stuff that's happening. Um, one really cool, awesome thing that we learned is that Miss Marvel's costume has been teased. Uh, we're getting a first look at Miss Marvel's costume. Let me go ahead and pull that up here. I just, I feel like Marvel has been very comic accurate lately. Um, I agree. And let's, we'll definitely talk a little bit about it when we talk about the finale of Falcon and Winter Soldier, but just the fact that it, it looks like it was pulled straight out of the comics. It really does. It really does look like it was straight out of the comics. Um, having a little difficulty here seeing myself but we get to see you at least so that's what matters Better. um so they're very very comic book accurate to miss marvel and what she looks like originally from the comics uh which is super awesome let's actually put her back there there we go there we see me um and you as well so there she is in all of her glory uh, who was the actor? I, I forget. Oh, Iman, Iman Vellani. So she is the first, uh, I believe, uh, the first Pakistani actress, uh, to be able to have a role in a Disney live action film. I think uh, to portray a, a Marvel or DC superhero at all. I, I think that's accurate. Um, because as we know, Miss Marvel's character is originally Pakistani uh true to the comics and it is you know good thing to see i, I think this might be the show um other than loki that i'm the, like the the four shows that they announced that were on the smaller scale i think this might be the one i'm excited for the most like this one she hulk um yes i i think this is the one i'm the most excited for because i feel like um i knew nothing about miss marvel and then I played the the Avengers video game, and then I learned a lot about Miss Marvel, and I, I really actually enjoy her character a lot. I, I of... fortunately was was blessed to have not uh, played what I heard was a <laughs> awful game. Oh, it was um, a terrible. Game. <laughs> as far as research, <laughs> as far as uh, what the the Avengers video game was, it was definitely one of the the, the worst video games to date, unfortunately due to, I mean, unfortunately, you know, seeing as its base material was something that I really ho hold close and dear to my heart, superheroes. Um, but yes, that is the first little bit of news. And then you had something you were really excited about to talk about, AJ. For Marvel? Um, or the, did we want to keep on Marvel? Did we want to talk about the... I mean, we, can keep, we can keep talking about Marvel, We could, or we could go like to the... I feel like we're on a Marvel track, and I got a. I actually had one more Marvel story that I forgot to send you to. Okay. Um, so apparently, and this came out I think right after our last stream, Scarlett Johansson is reportedly getting a big pay raise to return to the MCU. They're looking at like paying her the same kind of figure that they paid Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans to do more movies. I to I did them. hear that. I I did hear that as well. And it'll be interesting to see see what happens, especially with what they're you know what they're looking forward to doing um, in uh, phase four, uh, particularly with the the new who's supposedly supposed to be the new big bad, which is Kang, um, and having you know having to deal with the multiverse and time and all of that. So it'll be interesting to see how they're going to bring. Um, also, another really great character that a lot of people want to see on the big screen uh, on a Disney Marvel movie is Deadpool. Um, because I told you, I told you this. 
Um, there are some people who may not actually know this, but Scarlett Johansson and Ryan Reynolds were married. <laughs> they are divorced now. So they actually have it written in their contracts with Disney that they will not work together. Ever. They will not be on the same set together. They, not, they will not be um, on the, you know, they will, they will not be in a scene together. They will not work together. Um, you know what? Blue Phoenix, you're our best friend as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see how the MCU goes forward with bringing in the X-Men franchise and Fantastic Four into the mix, how that's going to work with Scarlett Johansson coming back to the MCU. And that brings me to the next little um, thing, which is uh, the Tony Bring Back Tony Stark campaign. Um, there are apparently um, fans who have been, if I can, you know, get the right thing, that have been, have paid to put up a billboard in Los Angeles to bring Robert, Do Robert Downey Jr. back to the MCU and to bring back Tony Stark. You think um, they want it. They don't want it. They don't want it. It would not be good storytelling. <laughs> I, I wanna I wanna know your like what your um your thoughts your real thoughts on this are. And I think, and I, I did talk to you a little bit about this. Is if they're gonna bring him back, the only way they could do it correctly is to bring him back as an AI, and even that I think is just fan service. Um, I don't think you can undead Tony Stark. I think even bringing back a parallel universe Tony Stark. From a story perspective, I feel like still kind of deletes the sacrifice that he made in that movie because an, another version came back and his, even though they're not getting the real Tony that, you know, Pepper loved, that his daughter loved, they're still getting another version of him and still getting some time with him. And I think that kind of deletes the the ending that Endgame gave us for him. Um, and I, I feel very similar to if they bring Captain America back. The only way they could do it is in a five minute here's old man cap maybe talking to falcon or bucky closing one of their stories mm -hmm. i don't think you can bring captain america back as young captain america same thing multiverse anything like that i think deletes their their story i would i would agree especially with the tony stark thing because as we all know tony you know tony if, if you haven't seen endgame one shame on you <laughs> two you should go watch it um, but I'm, I'm still going to spoil it if you haven't watched it yet. Uh, as we all know, at the end of Endgame, Tony commits the, you know, the ultimate sacrifice and sacrifices himself to get rid of Thanos and all of his baddies in one fell swoop. And, you know, the whole, uh, the, the snap, I am Iron Man, like that is the epitome of self-sacrifice personally. I could give two. I I, could, I couldn't give two craps about Cap's sacrifice because personally, I don't think he really sacrificed himself. But I think what he got was a good ending to the story. He like from his story perspective, I think what he got was the best ending we could have got. Yes and no, like. Like, with, with Cap, like, he didn't really, like, to me, he didn't really sacrifice himself. He went and got the the eternal reward of going back in time and staying with his, you know, his girlfriend and living his life out. Where Tony, Tony had a daughter, Tony had a wife, and he committed the, you know, he sacrificed himself for them. He sacrificed himself for them, for the Earth, for, for everyone. Um, and... To bring Tony Stark back would be a complete and utter uh, piss fest all over his all over all over his sacrifice, and I personally will not stand for it. Um, mm. If they wanted to bring Cap back as like Hydra Cap or something else like that, fine by me. Do mm. it. I didn't really like Cap as a character, anyways. I personally like what we're going to talk about later a lot better, um, but. That's just me. 
fight all day because I love Captain America more than I like Iron Man in the MCU. It's, um, but it's, I, that, and I'm speaking as a as a DC Comics boy. I never really read the Marvel comics right. until the MCU came out. I mean, I say, like same. Like I'm I'm talking as a as a DC Comics guy myself. Like the, that's the reason why I love Tony Stark so much is because he's 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 the the genius of the Flash and the rich philanthropist detective <laughs> of Batman. Which like Batman him like don't get me wrong Bruce Wayne himself is 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 a genius, um, but he's like besides the whole super speed, uh, he's like the combination of my two favorite superheroes from the DC universe. That's probably why I'm drawn to him so much. Um, but you know that's that's. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Tony Stark's character. I just I always gravitated more towards um, Cap's character than anything. But um, one thing I did want to say is, on the flip side, I would be perfectly fine if they brought Black Widow back because it, that movie Endgame didn't feel like the end of her story, like it did for Cap and for Tony. I would agree, mostly just because they've really like, even, which is really it's really sad that they've kind of treated her this way because Scarlett Johansson is an amazing actress and Black Widow is an amazing, amazing character. They really kind of just treated her like the sidekick. The entire time, yeah. and that personally to me did not does not give her justice, and that's why one of the reasons why I'm so excited for the Black Widow movie that's supposed to come out soon is because we truly get to see Black Widow in action as a as the main character in the story. It's not just her sitting on the sidelines while Cap and Iron Man duke it out. It's like truly everything focused on Scarlett Johansson and Natasha. So I think honestly for her and like the, the way they've portrayed her character, it sucks that it was her movie that kept getting pushed by COVID. I, of, of, yeah. The Black Widow movie. It's like, of course it's the Black Widow movie. Like who, who, what other, who other, who, what other movie would it be? It's certainly not going to be Loki. Who's, you know, a man. Um, but anyways, I digress. I digress. Um, but so yeah, uh, that is a really awesome part of the you know fans uh, kind of you know the essence of the whole Skyler uh, uh, of uh, whole Snyder cut esque thing you know team fans teaming up to bring back something that's been lost. Um, another really okay. great thing that we're gonna touch on now um, is the Sony Disney deal uh, with Spider Man. I am so happy that I didn't spend. Eighteen dollars on Amazon to rent uh, <laughs> Spider-Man: Far From Home because I was I wanted to watch it again, and like two weeks ago I was like I should rent this movie and and just watch it, and then like two days later they announced this. I'm like I'm glad I didn't rent that movie. So Black Widow, so the Black Widow story is going to be the whole Red Ledger pre Iron Man to my Ledger's full of red kind of. Kind I of thought stuff. it was taking place between Civil War and Infinity War. Is it? That's what I I had read. That it, it it basically takes place in the in the two years that, um, like Cap was on the run and she was basically on her own, not wanting to be with the Avengers. When is the Black Widow movie set in the MCU? So, we set eight years into MCU timelines past. Oh, okay. Um. Oh, wait, uh, no, that would that would still be that would still set it between Civil War and Infinity War, huh? Oh, okay, yeah, I would. Okay, so <laughs> Oz, Oz, uh, he said, "My Osmandius is saying the Black Widow movie is set between uh, between Civil War and Infinity War, but her story is only interesting during the Red Ledger. Uh, <laughs> her interesting story is before everything happens, uh, which is valid." Um, yeah, I think they're going to touch a lot on her before story, and we'll probably see a lot of flashbacks. The, the, we may see a lot of flashbacks, especially because, you know, her entire family is supposedly in it um, and everything. But, yes, so the Disney Sony Pictures uh, have officially come to an agreement that they will share content between the uh, universes as well as release everything on Disney+. Plus. Um, so Venom is going to be on Disney Plus eventually. All of the Spider-Man 
uh, 1, 2, and 3, the original ones, and Sp Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, as well as Homecoming, Far From Home, and the new one um, that is coming out will all be released to Disney Plus versus a Sony-based streaming service. So that is going to be huge for the MCU, mainly because we will be able to see a lot more of the Sony Spider-Man characters, I hope, within uh, the Marvel MCU Disney universe. Yeah, no, this is definitely something I'm, I'm very excited about. Um, I think it's a very smart move on, on Sony's part, especially since they're like one of the last companies who doesn't have a, a streaming platform. Mm -hmm. It is very smart of them to, to put their movies on, um, on Disney plus. I think it's going to get them like a lot more, like a lot of their sequels, I think are going to get a lot more traction because of this. And I think it's just a smart move for them. Uh, chat says the question will be how long before they go into the vault. That is the question. Disney does, uh, like to put things in vaults, uh, as we know. They, they got rid of the vault when they, they did Disney plus. I remember there was a whole, um, Instagram post, I think about it where they like, um, said the vault is no more. The vault is no more. Interesting. Oh, then... I mean, all the, the animated movies are on Disney plus. I mean, that's... yes, all the animated movies are on Disney plus. I think there are some though that aren't available on Disney plus. If I remember all, well, all 59, um, and like animated ones are still there. Okay. Those were the ones that they used to put in the vault, out of the vault, in the vault all the time. <laughs> right. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't think. I think Pixar. I think Pixar might be missing like one or two. That's possible. Um, that that might be due to deals with Netflix and things like that. I think so. that is. I, yeah. I think. I think deals with Netflix and deals with Amazon before they you know before they burn out. Mm -hmm. So it'll be. It'll be. You know. It'll be interesting to see what happens, especially since. I think it's not a infinite contract. I think it's a it's a temporary contract with Sony, just so that Sony still has like reins on it, so they could you know negate the well, deal once good. it runs it runs out. This is the same kind of deal that Disney had with Netflix um, back in 2011, 2012 for them to start um, making the Marvel shows and them to have the Disney movies and everything. Right. You, usually these are very temporary, just in case. Sony does want to make their own platform or does want to bring it to Netflix or bring them to who, well, I guess who it would still be Disney, but any of the other streaming platforms. True. This is, this is, this is, this is very true. Uh, I think that's it for Marvel. Yeah. I think that was, that was all. I think that was Marvel. the last thing for Marvel. And there was one thing that you were really excited about. Which but does the, contain some Marvel stuff. It does contain some Marvel. Yes. New cruise ship. So like, I've never really been, too excited by the disney cruises i always thought maybe one day i'll go on them looking at this new one that they're coming out with it's going to include star wars it's going to include avengers it's going to include frozen um and disney's cruises are very good at the theming i think the themes that i've seen so far from some of these photos mm -hmm. um is amazing like it they're kind of with the star wars portion they're doing what they're doing with the um star wars hotel in in Disney World, yes. where they're, like, they'll have the windows covered with this, the LC, LED be, screens that have the... Yeah, there'll um, be LED screens instead of actual windows. Yeah. And I, like, um, I'm trying to find that picture that I was looking at for the Star Wars stuff, but it looks like it's, like... I have it up. Um, I have, I have the, yeah, I have the uh, hyperspace lounge up. Yeah, it's a cantina, and that looks amazing. <laughs> no, absolutely, um, yeah. It, it looks super, super cool. Uh, and then there was also the, the frozen, so this is, this is what they're, the, the Disney wish is supposedly supposed to be like majorly t themed off of Tangled. Um, that's going to be their main themes in like the, the grand staircase and, and different things. Uh, but there also is going to be, uh, the interactive Avengers dining experience, uh, and as well as the interactive Frozen um, dinner theater. So let me let me see if I can I can show these images. Um, let's hide that. Uh, so that's going to be you know obviously that's the the 
the hyper the hyperspace lounge, and then <laughs> this is going to be Enchante, which is their main dining room. Uh, it's going to be run by um, Arnaud Lament, which it, he is the Michelin starred chef from La Assiennette Champenoise. I probably have mispronounced that because I do not know French. Uh, where's Allie when you need her, right, AJ? Um, right. And there will also be a cocktail lounge that connects both of the the Paleo the Paleo Steakhouse, uh, which is a Disney Cruise Line staple, um, as well. And then the Enchante Dining Hall. There will be the Rose, which is a cocktail lounge that is going to be subtly themed around Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Um, so there's a picture of it, I believe. And then there also there's the uh, tonight's dinner presentation, the Avengers dining experience. That one's going to be super awesome. And then as well, get me in, get my money. (laughs) Take money, (laughs) exactly. And then as well as there's going to be uh, the characters of uh, Frozen will be at the center of Arendelle, which is their the Frozen theatrical dinner experience which will have a menu of world-class cuisine infused with Nordic influences. So that is definitely going to be super, super awesome and super exciting for when, uh, when that launches. Uh, the Cinematic Universe is going to have a worldly menu, uh, where, so the dishes are going to be inspired by Wakanda and Sokovia, as well as New York. So that's 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 pretty pretty awesome there that they're gonna <laughs> New York's just pizza I guess uh, hot dogs you know it's gonna be a hot dog stand in the rent in the middle of the dining the dining hall just like ah uh, I'll take two throw throw them here boss uh, you just you see the hot dogs getting thrown across the thrown across the floor it's just someone dressed up as uh, as Stan Lee doing his hot dog guy cameo exactly exactly <laughs> oh man that would be great. Uh, the last thing uh, that we wanted to touch on is the that casting has started for the uh, Rick Reardon. Casting has started for Percy Jackson. Um, as we know, they are in the process of making... Uh, a Percy Jackson series on Disney Plus, and on April 27th, they announced that they are looking for uh, Percy Jackson. They're looking for the person to be cast as Percy Jackson, who will be the main character, as we all know, because the title is Percy Jackson and Lightning Thief. Uh, better not be a 24-year-old or however old What's-His-Face was as he played it in the movie. <laughs> I agreed. Um, they said that they are looking for... Someone who can play 12. So typically they're going to be looking for uh, an actor between the ages of t- between the ages of 12 and 16, probably more towards the older side just be- so that the, you know they can act, you know be a little bit more skilled acting wise. Uh, but if you do know anyone, this is open casting. so they will or they are looking for anyone and everyone. you just go to the Rick Reardon dot com and you look at the their casting page and they actually have a uh link that has all the information for percy jackson open call dot 20th television dot com uh to submit a self tape for consideration for the role of percy jackson (laughs) so they will i mean they they obviously they're also going to be you know looking for uh a, a grover and an annabeth uh, but right now they are focusing on Percy Jackson. Uh, I am if super. Just wanna, if they just want to cast Alexandra Daddario as Beth <laughs> again, I'd, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> I think we all would be okay with that. Um, <laughs> uh, but basically, uh, what's super super excited is that it is slated to be hopefully five seasons, which as we know, there are five books in the series, which means a book, a season. So hopefully we will be able to abandon the horror that was the Percy Jackson full length movies um, and the the new Percy Jackson Disney Plus series will give us what we've been wanting. And maybe 
will start the process to redo that awful movie about a dragon rider that we shall not speak of. Um, <laughs> that first them... will work a lot better too as a um, as a TV show than it did a movie. I had the same thoughts when they like um, a couple years ago when series of unfortunate events mm-hmm. came to uh, Netflix as a show. I think like books like those work a lot better than condensing them into two hour movies when there's so much you have to keep in to make it good. I would, I would agree though. I wish they would have kept Jim Carrey as uh, (laughs) Olaf because I feel like he would have done so much better uh, than Neil Patrick Harris, even though I love him. Um, Speaking of Neil Patrick Harris, well, another really great news is that they are doing a spinoff of how I met your mother is how I met your father. God, yes, I was so <laughs> excited. Honestly, I was a little upset when they canceled the um, Lizzie McGuire spinoff show. Yes. But if that getting canceled led to How I Met Your Father happening, I'm okay with it. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Lizzie McGuire. Hello, See Holly, you, Lizzie father. McGuire. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We just uh, need we just need to make sure that Bob Saget like narrates the entire thing. Um, what I want, I want Bob Saget. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I just I hope it's good. Um, having Hillary Duff attached to it is a good sign. They're clearly trying to get talent so that people want to watch. Kind of, I think they did it very similarly when they cast. Um, uh, I can't think of the actress's name. The person who played Lily, um, when they cast her in it, I think they were trying to use her like childhood stardom to get people in, and I think they're doing the same thing with with Hillary Duff. You know, Hillary Duff, like the age group that's going to be watching How I Met Your Father, loves Hillary Duff. So let's bring her in, and hopefully a good cast, and hopefully a good story. <laughs> exactly. Uh, hopefully we'll see the original cast in there as well, um, doing some things, at least being in there briefly. I would be okay if they didn't appear until, like, season two or season three, but in season one, we got, like, hints of McLarens and, like, things, like, inside jokes from the original series. Exactly. Like, wouldn't it be hilarious if um, she actually, like, lived in the same apartment building as Ted, the enti- like, almost the entire time? I didn't even think about that, but that's very possible because in canon, they moved out in 2014. So that's so if it's taking place in 2022, then it's very possible that it's the same exact apartment. So that would be funny. It would be it would be really funny. I do think I because at the end of um, like the last season or the second to last season, when you see the mother side of the story, you learn that there's two McLarens. I wouldn't be surprised if like her like group hangs out at the other McLaren. <laughs> Chat says Lizzie McGuire, but in How I Met Your Father crossover in the Spider Verse of Madness. There you go, Disney crazy, <laughs> Disney craziness. Just everything crosses over. Exactly, everything, everything crosses over. Um, but alas, that is all of the news that we have had. So onward to the main event, which has brought everyone here: the Falcon and the no, no sorry, Captain America and the Winter Soldier <laughs> finale. Uh. What were your thoughts on that, AJ? Oh my god, I was disappointed. <laughs> um, it's not that it was a bad episode. It's just like, it was a good episode in a great show. I'm... I just feel like everything that was set up, I, I just feel like they set so much up and they didn't necessarily have the right payoffs in the in the finale. Um... It's not like it's not like I was like disappointed that they didn't introduce things that I, I was speculating. It was more just that like um st- like the way they handled John Walker, the way they handled um Bucky and the the grand or the father of the guy he killed. I just thought those those were big points for the first five episodes and they just got super sidelined in the last episode. I would have I, to I would have to agree. Um, there were a lot of things that I feel were definitely sidelined in the final episode. Mainly, 
Bucky finally finishing the book. Like, that just wasn't, like, you you know, that was one of the main parts of the, the first five, the first five episodes, and then episode six comes, and it's almost all entire, like, don't get me wrong, like, I appreciate that they, uh, that they, you know, did focus on Sam, Sam Wilson getting, you know, becoming Captain America, and, you know, and everything, because that really was kind of the whole point of the show, um, but it's called Falcon and the Winter Soldier for a reason. We need more Winter Soldier content and just kind of throwing him on the sideline at just kind of like how they've done, they did with Black Widow and the, in the, the rest of the MCU is they just kind of put him as the sidekick. And I really thought they had a lot of growth for him over the show and they just, they, they went nowhere with it and it, it kind of brought him back to the character that he was before this show. I agree. Um, and as you know, as chat says, the John Walker ending was meh. It's like I'm back, and it's just yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if we want to get into it now or hold it off for a while. But I have a lot to say about how they handled John Walker in the last episode. We will we will save that for later, and also go along with, with what chat said about um, how it was a long setup for the moral message, and they're just. That's mainly what mainly what it was. It was just setting up for the moral message, which can be it understandable. Well. It was it was handled really well. Uh, the moral message of of everything, especially Sam's speech um, to the senator mm-hmm. at the end. I thought that that was some excellent writing, um, if not possibly some ad libbing there from Sam. I could definitely uh, see it be- there being some ad libbing. I can definitely, definitely see there being some ad libbing. I uh, my problem with that scene though was it where it was like the fact that it was just happening on the streets, surrounded by people, cops, and he's talking to these three senators that are kind of just like not interested in listening to him at first. It, mm-hmm. it, I felt like that needed to happen in the meeting. Like if he. They, like, all went back into the meeting room, and he was in there, like, they were thanking him. I feel like that would have been a better place they, for him to give that speech. I think they needed to do it, like, in the hall. Like, in, in, the, in the, the council chambers mm-hmm. uh, in exactly. Washington. Because, and not in his outfit. I I was fine with it in his outfit. I think I honestly think that makes sense that it was in his outfit because he's try that's him proving that he has the Captain America mindset. Mm-hmm. Um so I was fine with him being in costume for that. It was just more that it was just it felt so sh- street level. Yeah. And not street level at the same time, it which took me out of it a little bit. I would I I would agree um that it was just kind of a little it wasn't it wasn't big enough i do me, think the speech think. itself and and what was said and and how like you got there how it was handled i thought that was really good it was just the i think the execution of where it was and i honestly i would love to see a version of this finale without covid because we'll talk about it a little bit when we talk about the john walker stuff but where mm-hmm. they had scenes taking place in how it was filmed, I think, was affected by COVID because it really seemed like a lot of those fight scenes were on sound stages rather than out, um, like, on actual streets, which they filmed a lot of the episode two and three on actual street settings. Right. I I mean, I definitely can see the effects that COVID had, like you said, (laughs) Um, especially the fight between um, the super soldiers and Bucky just felt it wasn't really on location and like the the trucks were felt like it was a sound stage exactly it just wasn't it just wasn't you know new york city it was so hard to tell where everybody was during that fight too right like it was hard to kind of like when bucky went from the building to chasing the vans and then I was like, wait, are they still, like, at the bottom of the... Like, where are they? <laughs> right? Yeah, no, it, it definitely had a lot of... 
a lot of sound stage vibes. Yeah. Oh, which absolutely. which was unfortunate because if they were if, if like COVID hadn't hit, they were able to do it on you know on location in Atlanta or New York or wherever they wanted to do it. Detroit even like oh, if they filmed in Detroit. I would have been there in a heartbeat, just watching it. Well, I don't know if you watched the um the behind the scenes that came out on Friday, but they were talking about like, um. I think it was Puerto Rico where they originally wanted to film. Uh-huh. Um, maybe I forgot where it was. Maybe it was Puerto Rico. Maybe it wasn't. But they had had earthquakes right before they were supposed to go. Yep. So they waited for that to clear up. Then the second earthquake hit and they were like, okay, we can't do that location. So they changed it um, so they can do it. I think it was um, Germany or wherever they felt the, uh, the scenes um, where they're in uh, Madripoor and stuff. Yeah. Um, they had brought everyone over to, I think it was Germany to, to Germany to film. And that's when COVID hit and they had to bring the entire cast back. And then they had to like months later, bring them back over there to film certain scenes, but couldn't film other scenes that they had already pl- planned to film. Yeah, there. It was, it was Prague. Prague oh, is where Prague. they, yeah, Prague is where they were. Um, help from, help from chat there. Um, <laughs> no. And, and then, you know, speaking of Magic Report, let's not even get started on Sharon and the ending, like... Terrible handing, handling of a character. Right? Oh my god, that was just... It was, it just wasn't, like... There's, it... A, it doesn't make any sense. So, it makes sense when you remember back to the end of... Uh, the end of or, what? What was it? The end. There, there's a movie that it's. The, it it makes sense if she's a scroll. Yes, that's the one theory that I've seen where I'm like, if that's the case, then yes, I'm fine. Because with that. so, the whole the whole essence of Secret Invasion is that Samuel L. Jackson and uh, the, in the head scroll, um, I can't remember his name. Um, starts with a T, uh, yeah. Theos or something like that. Um, they they are working together to stop the scroll invasion. Because there's a there's the super scrolls, and then there's the mm-hmm. scrolls. The scrolls are on our side. The super scrolls are not. It also goes hand in hand with Kang and Fantastic Four and. And all of that. So if she's a scroll, um, then and I'm wondering if they'll retroactively make her a scroll with the reception to this. Um, I think but, they will. But it's like it's such. It's not even just that it's such a character turnaround for her, which I can understand. She was undercover for possibly seven years if she wasn't uh, blipped, which I don't think she was. Um. But it's just like the way it was set up, the way it was carried out, it, the choices that she made during the show do not show that she was the the power broker. Like, why was... would she help Zemo find the super soldier serum if she knew he was going to destroy it? Exactly. Or, as Chat pointed out, is the power broker the purple man? So that's, See, another, that's another theory that it could be, but also I'm hesitant to agree with because the Power Man's de- because Purple Man is dead. Well, I mean that's if they choose to keep that canon, right? And the, I would and, love to see David Tennant come back as Purple Man. Oh, I will. I, I would love to see Tenet, David Tennant yeah. in anything, but that's because yeah. David Tennant is David Tennant. Um, yeah, I don't know if he. I don't know. I don't know if they, they've decided to keep the Netflix films canon or not. Yeah, it depends on how they choose to handle that. It, it um, really it really depends on if we're going to see um, Daredevil in the new Spider-Man. I do think they might try to play this off the same way they played off the, uh, the Mandarin, where right. they planned the whole long for it to be Sharon as the power broker, and then the reception is just so bad where they're probably going to be like, oh... No, 
She's not the power broker. <laughs> she's a Someone scroll. Else. Yeah. Or even that she's just pretending to be the power broker to hide the power broker's identity. Well, I mean, because the person that she was on the phone with at the end of the finale is the power broker. It, I took it as just to be, like, her assistant. <laughs> I think the person that she was on the phone with is the power broker, so she's not really the power broker. Which I would be fine with. I don't like her as the power broker. I'd prefer her... I'm fine with... I can get behind her working for the power broker. That's something I don't Absolutely. Understand. And, you know, it, it goes it goes along our talk from, from last episode about who is the power broker. It could be um, the general from the Hulk. I'm spacing on his last name. Ross. Uh, Ross. General Ross. It could also be Stryker. Um, be, that would be a way to bring you know X Men the X Men universe into the MCU is that it's 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 Stryker is the power broker. Um, also Vincent D'Onofrio could also be the power broker. Yeah, we did talk about that, and I still think that with him it's it's less likely just because I think he would keep everything to New York. I think yeah, I think with with Kingpin, while it's a good theory, um. Yeah. I don't particularly see the Kingpin. I don't particularly see Kingpin like actually. I think he's going to be a challenge for Spider-Man. Hopefully, at some point. <laughs> I would hope to see Kingpin as a villain in a Spider-Man movie. Um, but the end credit scene was in Spider-Man: Far From Home. It was at the end of uh, end of that where uh, the scrolls were impersonating um, Fury and Hill. Hill. And Fury and Hill are on the space station helping them get all set up. Mm -hmm. So he, he says that, you know, scrolls have, it, it's become a situation we need you because scrolls have started to um, infiltrate, infiltrate places. So. No, yeah, I, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. I think anything they do at this point is going to be a retcon based on what happened and not their original plan. Um, but I think I think the next time that we do see her will either be um, Secret War or it will be the Armor Wars, um, since she's gonna you know have yeah. access to all that stuff now. And I think that's kind of what that was setting up. It's possible that that's when we'll see her next. Um, chat also suggests Victor Von Doom as the Power Broker, which which I brought up last time. I, you did bring up last someone time. I think it could be. Yeah. Uh, before he becomes, you know, magical. I think right. that's, you know, uh, I don't think it's going to, chat says Return of the Red Skull. I don't think it's going to be Return of the Red Skull just because Red Skull is still on the planet as the guardian of the soul stone. I wonder if we'll ever get any more of Red Skull because of what they did with him, but probably not. Probably, I, I, I don't think so either. Unless it's an alternate universe, Red Skull, which, or, or Red Skull, not Skrull, Red Skull that they bring back, I could see that. Uh, I mean, there's a lot. There are a lot of villains that it could be. Um, it could be. Plot twist: It's Tony Stark. Plot twist: It's actually Tony Stark. He's not really dead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no plot twist: It's Cap. It's Hydra Cap. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> No, it's old man Cap. He got bored. Oh, it's old man Cap. He got bored. He went to Magic Boy. He became the Power Broker. There you go. And he's trying to create more super soldiers as part of his army. And Bucky has to kill him in the next in the next Captain America movie. That would be something. Uh, how will Loki change the timeline? Uh, I think... How will Lopa change the timeline? <laughs> gotta love Buttspot. Um, I'll... Yeah. Uh, that's, I forgot to turn off butt spot for this, <laughs> but oh well. Um, Loki, with Loki changing, so that's, that's another thing, um, that, you know, chat brings up a, a really good point in how Loki is going to change the timeline. Because I don't think Loki, he's going to change the timeline. I think it's going to be more, like, it'll be, look like time traveling, but it'll be more multiverse jumping just because, um, the way that time travel has been set up for the MCU I think it'll be more not what he's changing, but what universes is he creating? Possibly. It, I mean, it, it, like, you know, it, like Chad says, it keeps the retconning open. True. Um, I mean, MCU at this point is like the king of retcon. <laughs> they really are. 
Uh, and so, like, it's just it's going to be interesting to see, especially like with with Shang Chi and the you know the Ten Rings coming and and the Loki Loki series coming. What is next for? For Marvel, because there's, with the exception of retconning, which granted that is one of the great miracles of <laughs> of of comic comic books is retconning and changing canon and restarting the universe, is is what is next? Like what what are they gonna come up with next that can really keep this story going? Because uh, there because there's like there's Immortals that's also gonna show up at some point with Angelina Jolie. Um, there's, you know, there's the Loki, there's Black Widow, there's the new Spider-Man movie, there's going to be, you know, Venom versus Carnage, uh, which I'm also excited to see. One thing, too, is I think we're going to, like, we're going to get down to all those movies and then we're going to look back on Captain America and the Winter Soldier and see it as oh, okay, that's what they were setting up here, and that's why it didn't make any sense at the time, or that's why they did it this way, or, or things like that. I mean, that is kind of, I mean, that is kind of how, how everything turned out, you know, this time, uh, yeah. with, like, Civil War and everything, like, oh, why did they do that that way? Or why did they do this this way? And then now we see why they did things the way they did. Uh, yeah. One thing that I think they may bring Robert Downey Jr. back for is his daughter. Yes, and that, and that's his, bringing the AI back. I think that would be where it works the most. I I would agree. Like not even just as an AI, like not even as an AI, but like a message, like a hologram message separate from the message he left um, at his funeral is that she's going to stumble into his old workshop or something in like Armor Wars or some other movie down the line. So uh, he'll be basically be like Jarrell. He'll be like he'll be like Jarrell. <laughs> is she's gonna stumble into his workshop, and she's gonna she's gonna trigger this message, um, this holographic message that turns out to be an AI, and because she's mad at him for dying and leaving her, he's just gonna show up randomly like, hey, you're ignoring me? Like, come on, like in true RDJ fashion, like. What are you doing? Get off your butt. Get in this armor and save the world. Like, and I do feel like if they do anything with his daughter, I think they're gonna. She's gonna be very similar to his character, um, especially since she did lose her father so young. I think it's gonna be like she has this hole, so she's filling it with being a sarcastic <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I would, I would agree, and uh, and like you said, and like chat said, you know his consciousness becomes the new Jarvis. I mean, part of me was expecting um, when Spider-Man put the glasses on in Spider-Man Far From Home that he was going to hear Tony's voice. Instead of Friday's? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, or she could, she, she's mad at him for leaving. And then like chat says, she creates the Tony AI. I could see that too. Um, or either she she's mad at him so much, or Pepper is just in this like depressive state that she, as a five year old, creates the Tony AI. I, um, I think I think she'll definitely be older than hopefully older than five when she does it. But we'll I I I think I think she'd be you know she'd be older. Let's put a five year old in the co in the Iron Man costume. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, man. But yeah, no, I, I mean, definitely legacy, especially in, in this show, is something that I think they're handling well. I think that was the part that was handled the best in this show was um, Sam's journey to becoming Captain America. Because I do feel like it would have been a cheat to start the show and he's Captain America. Uh, I would agree. The fact that they gave him this struggle, um, hearing t many different sides of why he should be, why he shouldn't be... Um, I think it really made Sam a character that I I hadn't cared about at all before the show really. That he's probably gonna be one of my favorite characters in the V four. I would I would agree with that just because 
just seeing him, his character, his just seeing his character work throughout the entire series and throughout all the episodes just has yes he's like I don't want to touch this I don't need this this isn't for me um we're gonna put it in a museum where it belongs and then his character arc be like I have to be Captain America not because Steve wants me to be but so that I can be the 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 symbol that Captain America stands for as a black man um and, and I do, do you think giving him John Walker as that this is what America wants Captain America to be, I think was a good moving force for that? I think it was. I think it was a good moving force. Um, and um, I think it really put a perspective like 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 we said like we touched on earlier everything was building up to that moral message at the end and so mm-hmm. having john walker as captain america you know the blonde hair the blue eyes and then um putting you know you know and then seeing sam wilson develop as a character against that image against that thought process of of who captain america really needs to be um Mm. really set the the pace for the entire show and building up to him finally accepting that he needs to bring to you know to carry the shield versus someone else carrying the shield mainly for himself not because it was expected of him by steve um and anthony mackie did put a lot of effort into the role um into his role as sam wilson during this series where um we see you know john walker the john walker's character definitely turn into that paranoid version of you know i hate to say this what how you know just like how just like the complete opposite of who captain america needs to be yeah but no one cared because he was who they wanted as captain america Right, and it's not even that he's like the, the opposite of, um, of Captain America. He is just, he is, John Walker is America, <laughs> um, and I saw this this written perfectly the other day where, um, Steve Rogers is the ideal America, what we think we are, what we want to be, um, where what a ton of people think America means, um, John Walker is the Captain America that america would have if captain america was real that that would be what the government would want that would be what a lot of people would want and sam is the captain america for the america we should strive to be and what the america that we want to move forward to and be and then the one thing that i that i really didn't like at the end was how they handled the end for isaiah I I thought that was like the first I thought that was I watched it through the second time and after listening to and reading some reviews on it I th- think I'm a little bit o- more okay with it. Mm. I st- still don't think it was the best ending that they could have given him in that part of the story, but I do think it made sense. I think it was a bit unceremonious a, a little bit and it felt rushed. Well, he didn't – I think it works perfectly because he didn't really want – you know, he's, he didn't want anyone to know he was alive, but he wanted people to know his story. And because one of the things he was – in the episode before that he said was that they deleted his story. Right. And I, I think it kind of works well th- this way. You know, Sam doing what he's doing is able to bring 
um, bring that story forward. I do agree. I do think it felt rushed, which I I agree with. Most of this episode felt rushed. I think, I think this show would have benefited by being another episode longer. I I I would agree. Uh, it definitely would benefit to be at least one episode longer, just because. And we're gonna like this is where we're gonna get into you know the John Walker part. The whole John Walker thing at the end was just entirely. The whole John Walker thing in this episode made no sense. To me. Made no sense at all. There was you... no there was no redemption arc for him. It was just oh this guy's fighting these guys so we're gonna team up with him anyways even though we hate him. Like you end the last episode with him making the shield. You're like, okay, this guy's going to go... Si- I think I even said in the last episode, there's going to be a three-way fight where they're all fighting each other and no one's on the same side. Um, that's not at all what happened. No. Right? Like, it... You're going into it. He's building this this shield. You think he's going to go crazy. He's going to he's gonna become a broken man by the end of this last episode. But it's... No, he gets there. You hear him go, Morgan, lo- whatever her last name is, scream it like he's a crazy person. And you're like, okay, this is where it starts. This is where he starts fucking everything up. But no, he just he just fights alongside Bucky and, and Falcon like nothing happened. I, right. And then... And the whole, like, him... Lo- I almost feel like they tried to do, like, him looking at his Medal of Honor flipped a switch in his brain that, you know, oh, I'm going about this the wrong way kind of thing. But at the same time, like, it just, it just didn't work. Yeah. And I because mean, when, when they were, when they were down there chasing Carly in the sewer, Bucky just like, you're with me and let's go. And it's just, well, I mean, that I I thought was in character that part because he he actually he goes down and he says I got this and Bucky looks at Sam and goes I'll go with him just to basically be like I'll make sure he doesn't fuck it up but it's still like it seems too friendly for what happened two episodes ago and what happened in the last episode and I I mean I would I would agree with like with what Chat says about you know his U.S. agent line was just goofy like him just saying I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. I so hard. I left at that part. Uh, it was just, um, but I mean, they, ch- he needed more than what they gave him for redemption. They gave him that one part where he had the choice to save those people or go after Carly. Uh-huh. And he chose to save the people. And it's like, cool. He chose that, but he also straight up murdered a man. So you, you really need to have a, a bigger redemption for him. And I, I'm hoping they, they do that when he comes back, but yeah, I just his character made no sense in this episode for what we saw for the last five episodes. They set up such a good, awful character, and they just didn't do anything with it. I mean, that's kind of kind of what they did with with WandaVision too. The last episode of WandaVision was just kind of meh. The Super the problem rushed. that I have with both of these shows is the same. Where the second to last episode was the greatest episode I think of each show. I thought the second to last episode of WandaVision did a good job setting up Wanda as a character, understanding the first four episodes or first, I think for that one, it was like six Mm -hmm. or seven at that point. Um, But then the last episode is just a a fight scene, which is the last third of a Marvel movie. It's not really a show ending. I don't think Marvel has figured out show endings yet. And I'm hoping no, which they could, they could take, they could take a few pointers from, from uh, from DC on how to end a sh- on how to end a TV show, uh, <laughs> where DC can take a few pointers on how to make a cohesive cinematic universe. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which hopefully, yeah. Um, it, I mean, chat does make a point that it's not an end; it's a lead in. But at the same time, I feel like yes, it's a lead in, but that's what end credit scenes are for. But it's even, it doesn't lead in. Like, I'm not excited at this point to, I, I mean, I'm not excited to see John Walker again. Um, I'm hoping we will because I want more of the character that we saw for the first five episodes. But where they left him off in this, A, I think that scene should have just been cut um, because it was clearly f- filmed with COVID restrictions. And it was clearly 
filmed at the same time the scene from the previous episode where she comes in and introduces herself was filmed because it's both on the same set. Right. And it makes no sense that they're in that room. Well, it doesn't make any sense that they're in that room. Like, why are they in that room? Exactly. Because he's not... Technically, he's he's not working with the U.S. government. Exactly. And that room is where he got... um, Where he got dishonorably discharged. Yep. So it's like, that clearly was just restrictions for filming locations. They had to film that there. And I think they probably only had... Um, they only had uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus for a set amount of time where they couldn't right. bring her to two different sets. They probably had to do her on the same set. Um, I mean, so Ch- Chad does bring up a good point that her character was supposed to be introduced in Black Widow, right? And I, I don't think I don't think her us never seeing her before. I don't think that takes a Way anything from that scene because I, I just don't think that scene was needed. I don't. I I would agree that the end scene with U.S. agent wasn't entirely needed. I think I feel like they could have done something in that same episode that they met her that 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 they met her and giving him the U.S. agent uniform so that he wears he wore, would wear, be wearing the U.S. agent uniform in the finale. How I kind of thought John Walker's story was going to go for this was he was going to show up. He was going to get his ass handed to him by Bucky and Sam. Mm-hmm. He was going to get arrested because he was wearing the Captain America costume, which he was specifically told he could not do. And um, like he was going to be held by um by the government and that's she was going to go down and call him and be like see i told you the best thing you're going to do is answer my call and i think that would have been a perfect ending for him he's i think that would have been a really good or send him to the raft yeah send him to the raft she comes in or like she like they say walker you have a phone call which Mm -hmm. he's on the raft i don't think (laughs) um and then, it, or it was a, or a note or something that just says "back away from the wall," and the wall blows up, and there's a helicopter with her in it, and he jumps on the ladder and flies away. And in the helicopter, she says, "See, I told you it'd be you. It'd be a good thing to answer my call, kind of thing. Like just thing like that, and hand him the uniform and be like." There you go. <laughs> yeah, I feel like for John Walker to continue to be a compelling character, and hopefully they they like fix fix it and bring him back to where he needs to be. Mm-hmm. But for me to have wanted to see more of him after this, I wanted him to be at his lowest point because I think a character like that at their lowest point, like I was honestly also expecting his wife to leave him after. I all also that was expecting time. that. Like I also was expecting her to just walk out and leave him and you know yeah. abandon him. Um, which personally I think would have driven him further into the U S agent mindset Exactly. as the world has abandoned me. My world is crumbling. I don't have a sense of identity. What am I going to do? And I'm wondering too, if we'll find out more about what her care, what Val's character is in black widow. But mm-hmm. I think, I think I have a feeling that they're just going to make her, character unknown a lot of mystery around her right now and make her a reverse um nick fury i think she's a stand-in for nick fury and colson for this phase of marvel i bet right and i mean chat does make a good point that the wife could also be hydra that's true as well um but there's nothing in the show that i mean i could point to that though though. there's nothing i do think the show could have benefited too from a little more time with um like a flashback like a flashback or two for um john walker where we kind of see them offering captain america or kind of what led him to that to get captain america yeah uh, i just not like a long flashback but like maybe like a five minute flashback i think would affect a lot of his or like like a flashback uh in during was it episode four that that they showed up that he died that he killed the guy killed the dude 
Oh, yeah, he killed the guy in episode four. In episode four, when he, like, does the whole, like, head shake thing, do a flashback to, like, back when he's, you know, in the military in Afghanistan or Iraq or wherever he was to, to kind of show, the like, where he is mindset-wise that led up to him being this paranoid, you know, the, this paranoid. Yeah, I think that would have been really all you needed. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I just... The handling of him and and Carly, too, I think, in the last episode were just so disappointing for the characters that they've tried to build up over the first five. Right. Especially... Because Flag Smasher, Flag Smasher is a is a is is a comic canon villain, mm-hmm. um, which I think we brought up once. Uh, yeah, he's a villain with um, with, when um John Walker is Captain America in the comics. R- exactly. Mm-hmm. I personally think that she. I think. I do think her story probably got screwed a lot by COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, there's been a lot of rumors that there was a whole storyline with her cut because of similarities to COVID. Um, but I think it, it, it does seem like they really didn't know what to do with her in the last episode. And honestly, the whole plot of the last episode does not seem to fit in with the rest of the show. Like when you're thinking of, okay, they're all of a sudden in New York and right. they want to bomb this place because they're making the vote but like they really didn't set that up within any of the episodes other than they were trying to make sure that they had a place to live still Uh, it's just them being in new york was just like how did everyone get to new york no i would i would i would agree that uh carly's carly's storyline just wasn't there wasn't just there wasn't enough material there in Carly's storyline to really give us who really, who, who flag smasher really is supposed to be. They kept trying to tell us that she's a, um, a redeemable character, someone who has a good heart, but they never showed that to us. Like she kills people. She's pretty much just as bad as John Walker. And I feel like that scene where like Falcon is carrying her lifeless body. Like it was hopeless that he couldn't save her it just didn't feel right because I don't think there was any way that Falcon could have saved her at that point. From what we saw, I know the, sh- the move there, the show was trying to tell us that she could be saved, but I don't think she could have been saved. I don't, yeah, I don't, I, I don't think they, they should have like really, like, I, I think a lot of it has to do with, um, a lot of it has to do with, with, with who Sam is the whole redeemable mm-hmm. thing um, and the whole Bucky thing. Like Bucky, Bucky was redeemable as winter soldier cause he was brainwashed. Uh, but like it also like, uh, and, and everything kind of like chat said, it, everything kind of came to, to, to end just as Zemo predicted it would. Um, it was part of Zemo's prophecy so much as, as Which, it's come to say, you know, I think him not really being in the last episode makes his character the best character other than Sam I would I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> I would absolutely agree. Um... Because, like, in his character, I love is just so clear cut. He has a he has a goal. He has a mission. He has a um, he has a code and he sticks to it throughout the whole show. He doesn't wave. Really, the only time, the only thing he waves on is, okay, Winter Soldier, I'm not going to kill you. Like, you are not like the rest of the Super Soldiers. Right, and the best dressed character, too. Oh, absolutely, 100%. 100%. <laughs> um, one other thing that I thought was really funny is how well they portrayed Bucky uh, at the picnic. Oh, my God. Yes. Uh, can we get like a can we get a hour long cut of that? <laughs> Honestly, if this whole show was just like Bucky and Sam in Louisiana with the 
the family working right? on the boat, I would watch the whole show. Exactly, just like an entire hour episode of just <laughs> of just them working on the boat together. Uh, give me a whole four and a half hour series of that. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> just like the 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 insults coming back and forth, the quips, uh, the jokes. Is is great, and then having him come into this, uh, into this picnic, which most from the reaction of Sa- from Sam's reaction, he was not invited to. <laughs> <laughs> his sister invited him. Exactly, his sister <laughs> invited him. <laughs> um, and what he what does he bring? He brings a cake, a store bought <laughs> cake. <laughs> He knows he's smart. He knows he knows not to bring a homemade dish to spent two years in Wakanda. Exactly. (laughs) He goes to the store and buys um buys buys a cake. (laughs) Did you you see Chad says should have added him walking out of Sam's sister's house in the morning as Sam wakes up. I I do uh, I honestly do hope we see more of like Sam's family and Sam's sister and his uh, nephews moving forward to because i i really did like that aspect yeah. um in kind of seeing where sam comes from i it, and kind absolutely. of that he does have something to fight for absolutely all right so we are nearing the last 10 minutes of there is one last thing i do want to mention because it was yes. probably the thing that i was the most disappointed about about this whole show was and i mentioned it at the beginning was how they handled bucky and the um the guy's dad yes like that was just the fact that that wasn't a the first i thought that would be the first part that we saw in this episode was him doing that and then kind of starting to feel redeemed and then going into the fight after you know dealing with his ghosts but instead it's the la- one of the last scenes that we see and it they cut away from it when they cut away right i got so I was already like at that point of the show. I was already like, okay, this is very disappointing. This is very disappointing because they, like, they didn't. Yes, he redeemed himself by admitting that it was him as the Winter Soldier, but I would have liked to see the old guy, the old man, say, "I forgive you." I mean, or at least even if thank you for like... telling me. Even if it wasn't something like that, even if the guy hated Bucky. It, this is like Bucky's whole story through the show was leading to this moment of him confronting his past as the Winter Soldier and admitting he did these things. He wasn't in control, but he did these things and he has to live with these ghosts. And I understand that we didn't have to see the whole explanation of what happened of him telling the guy what happened. But I would have loved to see, you know, the a the guy's reaction, how he how he feels about this. And just kind of an emotional scene. I think that could have been an Emmy-winning scene for I, Sebastian Stan. I absolutely agree with you. I think that I think he was robbed. He was absolutely one hundred percent robbed from that scene. And yeah, I don't know I just, if it was just because of COVID or it was because of editing, or or, or what it was. Just, I, I honestly would have rather seen that scene extended, and never see. Um, Sharon Carter's post credit scene. <laughs> yeah. I I think so. And then just him looking through the window um, uh, at him, at the old man, and... I just, I was like, what is he thinking? Like, you're, I don't know how to feel about him looking in there because I don't know how the guy reacted and I don't know what the, what, like, if he told the woman what the woman thinks... It's just like I understand that okay he's not gonna go in there he's he's closed that door, um, but it made it meant nothing. I <laughs> uh, I completely agree. Like it, it, it absolutely, excuse me, it absolutely meant nothing. Like it, there, there, the redemption arc, of uh, the redemption arc within the show of Bucky, and it was just completely blown out of the water because because of that scene and i know we're getting real low on time and i just wanted the other thing i wanted to touch on was falcon's costume yes um, falcon's costume the they should have gotten rid they should they needed to get rid of the neck piece yeah the second watch through i was much more okay with the actual costume the first time i like he came on screen 
which I think was another disappointing moment. I think we should have gotten like a full, like, wide wide view of the full costume in glory. But instead, you kind of get up close above his face, and you really can't see the whole costume until the end of the show. Right. And, like the whole episode, the first watch through, I was like, "What does it look like?" I kind of want to just get an idea of what it looks like. Um, and I thought it was too busy to start. I was okay with it the second time. Uh, the neck thing. The more I look at it, the more okay my eyes are getting with it. And I honestly realized by watching the behind-the-scenes stuff, uh-huh. it's CGI, and that's why I didn't like it. The um, neck piece is CGI? So the actual so, costume, it has a neck piece, but uh-huh. because of the way physics works, it keeps um, – every time he'll turn, the neck piece will, like, um, go out a little bit. Right. So, like, it looks bad. So they had to CGI the tightness on his neck. Is that why it detached the helmet from the neck? I I, I agree. Um, is that why there are, is that why there are scenes where you don't see it? Probably, because they did say it took a lot of time editing, like hand editing. I that. think that I think there were scenes that it wasn't in, that they took the neck piece off, and those are the scenes that I was like, yes, that is how it should look like. He still had the goggles and the white like the white headband helmet thing, but the neck honestly, piece, too, if you were to to commit to it being a full head thing or not ear holes, I think I could be okay with that in the neck thing, but it's just the way it, and the way it looks, I understand it's comic accurate, but I just don't, I didn't even like how it looked in the comics. I think when yeah. they first showed that either. Uh, yeah. And, and <laughs> anyways, um, I, I completely agree with you. Um, like I, I, I like the body of the helmet or the body of the, the, the costume. The body of the costume is great, but that I'm way, neck piece and the ear holes need to go. I was not on board with the body of the costume the first time, like I said, but now I'm, I'm more on board with it now that I kind of like – when they showed that poster, the poster they released right after uh-huh. the episode, I was like, okay, this is what I needed in the show because now I'm getting a good look at it and this looks a lot better than I thought it did. <laughs> But uh, I, as as we were saying, we are nearing the end. Uh, we've got about four four minutes left before the end of our end of our show. Um, I know that we <laughs> uh, we need to talk about what are you most excited about that's coming that's coming soon on Disney Plus. Easily, Bad Batch. <laughs> Easily, Bad Batch. I I agree. Bad Batch is is the next big thing that's coming out and i'm so excited for it um i'm hoping it's just as good as clone wars if not better i'm hoping that they don't make it too i don't i hope they don't make it too like kid friendly and audience friendly where it's like oh if you didn't watch clone wars that's fine we'll hand hold you through everything right i i think they need to they need to focus on um focus on the true audience mm-hmm. which is those that have watched clone wars and know who the bad batch is mm-hmm. do you I'm think, definitely hoping do, for some connections to like mandalorian and stuff i, I think i, I think that. we're gonna see some connection to mandalorian i'm thinking probably some rebels connections that we're too. gonna see some rebels connections as well as i'm i'm wondering if we're gonna see order 66 on screen again oh definitely 100 percent I, th- I think that probably will be how the show either starts or happens in the first episode. Yeah. Um, I'm also kind of a little hoping that we get, like, um, with the Order 66 stuff and with the time period that it's taking place in, I would like to see... Um, what's the guy's name from... The Jedi from Rebels? Uh, uh, Keenan. Yeah, Keenan. I'd like to see, like maybe him pop up for an episode or as a cameo appearance or Cal from uh last Jedi or not last Jedi, uh fallen order. Uh, I uh, don't know if we will ever, yeah. Kana Jarvis is the, um, mm-hmm. is the, I don't think we're going to see K. I don't think we're going to see him not Kanan, but the, uh, fallen order. Um, I don't think we're going to see him just no. because, I, I think they're keeping they're keeping most of like the the video game universe separate a little bit, which I is a shame. I wouldn't be surprised if we do see Cal show up in something. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, I because of who they cast as it and the fact mm-hmm. that he is a TV actor. I think I, we. I think seeing Cal in Mandalorian would be awesome. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Hundred percent. That he, you know, he sur- seeing uh, he survived. He sur- he survived the empire, and mm-hmm. he's working with Ahsoka. Uh, one of the th- people that I want to hopefully see in Bad Batch is Thrawn. Yeah, yeah, I think that could definitely see kind of see his rise to power there, definitely. Mm-hmm. Which he's also a, a character I I'm really looking forward to seeing in the live actions. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I think I'm I'm wondering how they'll handle um the character that they introduced in Mandalorian, um who's played by God, what's her name? The the woman who plays It's played by Starbuck, um, from Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> um uh, Satine's sister. But yeah, I think um I think that we're going to see a lot of tie-ins. I, I bet we're going to see a lot of set of... Bo-Katan. No, no, I'm sorry. No, I was talking about um, the character they introduced in the first season of Mandalorian and was with Boba Fett. I can't think of her name. She, The woman from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, 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 that one that was playing Mina uh, Wen. Uh, yeah. Mina Wen, yeah. Um, Mina Wen. Because well, her she's character's already Fennec. confirmed. To... She's in it, yeah. yeah. And, and so I'm wondering how they'll She's voicing that. her, too. Um, yeah, I wonder how they'll handle like that story and if we'll see connections with her... And, um, like, Tatooine or, or anything like that. I don't know. They have a lot to work with, and I think it, it could either be really good or um, or too cheesy. It could either be too much fan service or the right amount. Is... <sighs> Who's, di- who's directing it? Is is he is the the original director of directing Bad Batch? I think uh, Dave Filoni is. Is Dave Filoni attached, doing, attached to it? Um. I would hope so. I I would at least at least a few episodes. Uh yeah, he was he was producing it. I don't think he was, he was producing the head it. Of it. But he, um, it looks here like he did have some changes. He, he, he is, he is producing it. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like he's directing it. We don't but know I who's mean, directing it. As long as he's like producing it, I think that's fine. I think he's he's probably putting his voice in and making sure. Right. Next, at this point, I think he's the Kevin Feige that Star Wars needs. He's the Kevin. He's he's Star Wars is Kevin Feige. Yeah. Uh, I would agree. And then, I don't think they've put him in that position yet, and that's why. And I'm and Joe and Joe Favreau, Joe Favreau is is his psychic. Um, <laughs> he's his yeah, John Favreau. He's like his John R2D2. Favreau of, uh, of the Marvel universe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sar Guerrera and is probably going to show up. Um, in in Bad Batch, I think. I think he was he in the trailer. I don't remember. It's been a while since I watched that trailer. Because if Saw Gerrera is in there, then there will be a Rebels well, yeah. uh, attachment to it. So, Why? Well, uh, what's it? If Thrawn shows up, there'll be a Rebels yeah, attachment. Yeah, that's true. Um, but, so, yeah. But yeah, that's like the that's the main thing I'm excited for. Um, especially that's coming May 4th. <laughs> exactly. It's, you know, it's coming, uh, coming in two days. Um, but, thank you everyone for tuning in to another episode of two bros and a mouse uh we will be back in two weeks uh from today at 7 30 7 30 7 30 eastern so mark your calendars um and i am deacon sink abs i did not hear you we did not hear you i'm aj slabs there we go (laughs) um (laughs) um so we we are two bros and a mouse and thank you and we will be sending you over to um sending you over to aj's page um so he will be doing some disney ranking on his own page so got some good ones tonight we got hercules we got uh uh oh 
Pocahontas? No, I did Pocahontas last week. Uh, I got I definitely got Hercules. I can't remember anyone else I did. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys and good night. <laughs>